What's up, my Gs? I go by the name of Grim Credible, and welcome to my Dragon Quest journey, a series where I explore the world and stories of the Dragon Quest franchise. Last time we experienced the first game of the first trilogy, Dragon Quest 1. This time we tackle the next game in line, Dragon Quest 2. Dragon Quest 2 is everything you remember from part 1, but with more monsters, more heroes, more battles, more spells, and a bigger world. I really enjoyed the expansion of the world and story, and this felt like the perfect sequel. I also started reading the Dragon Quest The Adventures of Daimanga, and I'm currently on chapter 41. When I get to about chapter 100, I'm going to make a video on the story and my thoughts of the manga so far. Reading the manga has me even more excited about the upcoming anime. But with all that said, let's jump right in. Development for Dragon Quest 2 started in April of 1986, a month before the release of Dragon Quest 1. In Japan, Dragon Quest 2 was developed by Chunsoft and published by Enix in 1987, and it made its way to North America in 1990. It was released in 2000 for the Game Boy Color as a combo pack along with its prequel Dragon Quest 1. And like Dragon Quest 1, the story was written by Yuji Horii, who stated that he created story plot points in his mind and then worked on the physical world. After that was done, the key elements of the story were created together. Yuji Horii allowed Akira Toriyama to paint full drawings instead of directly creating the pixel art. The monster names, move sets, and personalities were all created beforehand, and with the addition of so many new monsters, Akira Toriyama had his hands full. Though he did mention that compared to drawing Mango all the time, he enjoyed his time painting the designs. The music was composed and directed by Koichi Sugiyama. In February of 1987, a Dragon Quest II album was released that covered 10 orchestra version soundtracks, with some of the tracks being classical and some of them being jazz. Chunsoft's president, Koichi Nakamura, directed the game and was also responsible for half of the programming. On November 11th, 1986, weekly Shonen Jump magazines reported that the game would be released in late December. The developers tested the game and found that it was too difficult and ended up having to balance it, delaying it for a month. Eventually they got it done and rushed to deliver it to Nintendo. It was then released in Japan, January 26, 1987 for the Famicom. In the United States, it was released as Dragon Warrior 2 in 1990 for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This version added a cool introduction that showed the events that led to the story of the game. Let's take a look. The name of the Princess of Moonbrook and the Prince of Kanek are determined by the name you choose. So there isn't an exact name for the characters. For each character, the game chooses a name out of 8 different choices. In my gameplay, the princess was named Maria and the prince was named Cain. Also, since the version I'm using is the Super Famicom version with English translations, some of the names might be the Japanese names. I will be using the English names though. Ages ago, a young descendant of the legendary warrior, Erdrick defeated Dragon King and returned light to the world. The young man, together with his bride, left on a journey to build several new countries. These countries were ruled by the children of that young couple and were handed down to the following generation. A hundred years have passed since then. This is Moonbrook. It is a country far to the southwest of Middenhall. In the courtyard of the castle, the king and young princess are passing the time with a peaceful talk. However, what's going on? It, isn't anyone there? Oh, sire, it is terrible. The forces of the evil priest Hardon have invaded their castle. What? 
You say Hargon is attacking? Damn that Hargon. We cannot surrender. Summon the soldiers at once. Yes, right away. Now Maria, you should hide in here. If anything should happen to me, do not grieve. F Father. Now, go quickly. I must inform the King of Middenhall of our situation. Come here, you demon. Take this, you bastard. Come here, you demons. Arg. Father. I must go forth quickly and inform the king of Middenhall of our situation. You're wounded. What on earth happened? Forget about me. I must meet the king right now. There are evil deeds that I must relay. We understand. Let us help you up. If everyone in the castle finds out, there will be widespread panic. We will carry you quietly. King of Middenhall, the soldiers of the evil priest Hargon attacked my castle, Moonbrook. Hargon has called upon an evil god to fulfill his intention to destroy the world. Your Highness, you must take action. Prince Pauli, my son, did you hear the story? You are a descendant of the great warrior Erdrich. Now the time has come for you to test your strength. This is not the time to grieve. When you are prepared for your journey, come and see me. Please give that brave soldier a proper burial. Right away, the soldier passed away. Now, Polly, open up that treasure chest and make preparations for your journey. In Kanik and Moonbrook, there should be others who share the same blood of Erdrick. If you combine your power with these people, you can destroy the evil beings. You start the game as the Prince of Middenhall, and you leave the castle in search of your cousin, the Prince of Kanik, who is also on a mission to slay Hargon. You find the prince, and together you travel to the town of Moonahan, searching for the Princess of Moonbrook. While at Moonahan, you run into a strange dog who follows you around. After seeing that the princess wasn't there, you decide to travel to the castle. After arriving at Moonbrook Castle, you find it in ruins and find out from the spirits there that the princess has been turned into a dog by Hargon and the only way to reverse the curse is to use the Mirror of Ra. The two princes search for the mirror and find it in a swamp with the help of information gathered from the spirits and different people. You travel back to Moonahan and use the Mirror of Ra on the strange dog. 
the dog changes back into the princess. Now restored to her normal self, she joins the two cousins on their mission to slay Hargon. You then travel to Ripperport, a port city, and there you rescue a young girl from a pair of gremlins. The girl takes the three heroes to her grandfather, and grateful for their bravery, he allows them to use his ship to help them on their journey. The heroes travel east and reach the continent of Alephgard, where they visit the current king of Tantigua. The king is afraid of Hargon and locked himself away. Across the river you enter Sherlock Castle and meet a descendant of the Dragon King, who tells you that you need to find and collect five sigils and bring them to the Rubus Shrine if you wish to defeat Hargon. With the new information, the trio travel the world collecting the five sigils. After killing monsters and exploring dungeons in search of the sigil, you finally collect them all. You travel to the Rubus Shrine and offer up the sigil to the goddess Rubus, who gives you the Rubus Charm. She tells you that one day, when you are disoriented and tricked by illusions to use the charm, with this you can finally defeat Hargon, the evil wizard. You travel to Rome, where Hargon's castle is, and when you enter you're confused because it's an exact mock-up of Middenhall Castle. All of the people here are in favor of Hargon and refer to him as the Great Priest. When you go to see the king, he is accompanied by women, and he says he made peace with Hargon. You use the Rubish charm and reveal the true nature of the castle. Once in the castle, you travel up the stairs, and on the way up, you face three guardians who keep anyone from seeing Hargon. One by one, you defeat the three guardians, and finally make it to Hargon, where the final battle begins. Hargon is strong, but when he is defeated, he reveals that someone stronger is about to kill you all. The tower starts to shake, and the floor around you starts to fall apart. Summoned is the demon Malroth. The battle with Malroth is difficult, but the heroes prevail slay Malroth, once again bringing peace to the world. The three cousins head back to Middenhall, where the king recognizes them for their strength and bravery. The king offers you, his son, the kingdom, and you accept, making you the new king of Middenhall. Compared to the first game, this game took me way longer to finish. I finished the first game in 6 hours and this one took me 2 days. Most of the time was spent traveling around the world and grinding for levels and money. One of the first things you notice that is different from Dragon Quest 1 is that there are multiple monsters in battle. To make up for more monsters, you end up with 3 party members who have different spells and use different equipment. This made the battles way more enjoyable and strategic. I can use the main hero to deal strong single target damage and the other heroes to heal and use spells that hit all enemies. The main hero didn't have any spells but could wear the strongest equipment. The Prince of Kanik was able to use a weak healing spell and a mid tier healing spell along with one spell that attacked all enemies. The Princess of Moonbrook could use the same mid tier healing spell and a high tier healing spell as well as two different spells that attacked all enemies. There were other spells that helped like debuffs and buffs so it gave me a lot of options. After the battles, enemies would sometimes drop items like equipment or healing herbs, which helped with getting more money most of the time. The traveling took long, because of all the battles that would pop up. Also, the world was two times bigger than the first Dragon Quest, and it really added to the trilogy as a whole. The new map included the continent of Alephgard, as well as three other continents. And with the bigger world came a lot of new monster designs, and most of them looked pretty good. My favorite was the demon Maoroth, who looked like a monstrous and demonic version of Shenron from Dragon Ball Z. He had 6 limbs and looked vicious. He actually beat me a couple times and I struggled to beat him. He wasn't too strong himself, but after fighting the 3 guardians in Hargon, the princess and the prince were low on MP, so I was limited on healing, but eventually I was able to win. All in all, the game was pretty fun and very enjoyable. I enjoy exploring the extended world of the Dragon Quest trilogy, as well as the new additions to the story. The upgraded battle system added actual strategy to the game, and honestly that was really needed. The story was entertaining. I just wish they gave more of a backstory to where Hargon came from and why he wanted to destroy the world. The music didn't get annoying, even after hours of repetition, and I hope some of this music gets revamped for the upcoming Dragon Quest anime in fall. If Dragon Quest 3 is the upgrade of this, it's gotta be good, and I'm excited to get started on that. I know it's a prequel to Dragon Quest 1, so we'll get to learn more about the legendary hero Erdrich. While I was making this video, a friend actually told me about a Dragon Quest movie on Netflix that came out in 2019 called Dragon Quest Your Story, and the trailer looked really good. I loved how it looked, and I'm sure I'll be making a video about that as well. This just keeps getting better and better, and I hope you guys will continue to join me on my journey. 
If you like this video, please subscribe and hit that like button down below. And don't forget to drop a comment. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get notified and don't miss any of my videos when they come out. I hope you enjoyed this addition to my Dragon Quest journey. And I'll see you next time with the next Dragon Quest video. Thank you guys.